Member statements? The member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. Today, I would like to recognize and gra congratulate Alex Mustakis, the founder and artistic director of the not for profit Drayton Entertainment in my riding of Perth Wellington. Alex is an important and active member in our local community and, so and someone who has done so much for one of our cultural industries in Ontario. Earlier this year, Alex was presented with the Meritus Service Medal by the Governor General of Canada. The medal recognizes Canadians for outstanding contributions in any field. Alex received the medal for his lifelong commitment to making the performing arts affordable and accessible to those in Ontario and beyond. Alex has achieved a truly formidable feat, building Drayton Entertainment from the ground up, operating theatres at seven locations across southern Ontario. I had the pleasure of meeting Alex with Alex and seeing a couple of their performances earlier this year, which I greatly enjoyed. In addition to Alex's Meritus Service Medal, his work with Drayton Entertainment has gained him and the organization six Lieutenant Governor General Awards for the Arts, a pre prestigious honour bestowed on arts organizations that exemplify outstanding private sector and community support. The team at Drayton Entertainment was able to do this with an unorthodox but promising business model, one that is fiscally, res fiscally responsible, utilizes strong networks, and gives back to the community. Some of the organization's good work includes annual donations to over 2,000 tickets to more than 750 charities, aiding them in their own fundraising efforts. And unlike many other organizations, Drayton Entertainment relies on volunteers, over 30,000 hours of volunteer activity per year. I want to congratulate Alex again, and under your guidance, I know Drayton Entertainment will continue to be very successful for years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Do the member statements in rotation. The next statement, the member for University Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, this week we recognised Overdose Awareness Day. In 2021, 560 people died from an overdose. That is the highest number of drug poisoning deaths ever recorded in Toronto. Acute drug toxicity is the current number one cause of death for youth in Ontario aged 15 to 24. Ontario has an opioid crisis. These are the words of Zoe Dodd, a leader in the work to save people's lives. This is what she says. The US and Canada have now been in a devastating drug poisoning crisis for a decade. This isn't happening like this anywhere else in the world. These deaths are preventable. This crisis will end when we truly shift as a society. To the workers leading change on this crisis's front lines, you have been to too many funerals. To the families who have lost people to drug overdose, I am so sorry. International Overdose Awareness Day is a day for us to remember those who we've lost and to continue to advocate for better solutions. That means listening to health professionals who see clean and safe supply as a way to stop people dying from toxic street drugs. It means permitting and funding opioid consumption sites like the one in Kensington so people can safely use. And it means increasing funding to mental health treatment and addiction treatment that's been proven to work and supporting and building more permanent supportive housing. This is a complicated crisis, and compassion and kindness is needed to address it. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements? The member for Scarborough Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The achievement. Today I'd like to speak about returning to school, and uh, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. The achievement and well-being of children and youths is always in the forefront of my mind. I want to take the time today to give a shout out and thank the organizations in the writing of Scarborough Centre, like Lights Out Basketball Academy, for their efforts and initiative in getting our young minds prepared for greater success. Lights Out Basketball Academy is an organization based at Ellesmere Community Centre and led by uh, Coach Ken Wade, Coach Riggle, Coach Durham, and Coach Christian. They not only teach essential basketball skills to other kids, but they work hard in bringing positive differences into their lives. Mr. Speaker, recently they have partnered with Adidas Canada to ensure that their players return to school with backpacks. Small gesture, like these make such a difference, ensure that kids are get, going to school ready to learn 
and to look sharp. To the students of Scarborough Center, even though I am no longer your school board trustee, you can count and rest assured that I will continue to advocate for you and have your back to ensure you have the appropriate resources you need to succeed. Our government has enacted a great plan to support uh, by uh, historic investment in education so you can have a safe, normal, enjoyable return to school with a full range of extracurricular activity and support you want and deserve. Best wishes for a happy and healthy return to school in the 2022-23 school year. Thank you. Thank you. The next member's statement, the member from Mishkigawak, James Bay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's always a honor to speak uh, for my people. The only medical facility that's their lifeline. They currently have two nurses manning the station when usually they have nine and even 12 prior pandemic. They're, they are open for emergency only cases. Basic medical care is not an option. No prenatal services, no, no regular checkups. Being proactive, preventive for health issues such as complication with diabetes is not an option. They deserve better. The entire province is facing a, a, a nursing shortage, but these communities have even greater challenges and things need to be addressed. These are flying communities with no road access, no access to nearby hospitals or ER departments. They are, there is a surge of COVID that has threatened the community. Fun funding is heavily needed at these communities in order to hire proper staff to get specialists, doctors, and in and out of the community for clinic for consultation to give them a medical attention they deserve. Finally, a long-term recruitment and retention plan needs to be developed with First Nations, the Inuit Health Branch and Indigenous Services Canada and the province, uh, provincial government to ensure adequate and accessible health care for all northern, co northern communities facing these issues. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements. The member for Mississauga Centre. September 1st, the people of Slovakia are celebrating the 30th anniversary of the adoption of the Slovakian Constitution of 1992. For me, as someone who was born in the capital city of Bratislava and traces her paternal roots to this beautiful country, it is a day of pride and celebration. The signing of the Constitution de facto established Slovakia as an independent and sovereign country and was a direct consequence of the events of the peaceful, non-violent and student-led Velvet Revolution which took place in Czechoslovakia in 1989 and resulted in the ousting of the communist regime. Slovakia today is a developed country of 5.4 million with an advanced high-income economy, a strong stance on civil liberties, democratic governance, universal health care, and free education. Led by Zuzana Chaputova, the country's first female president, Slovakia is a member of the EU, NATO, UN, and the Council of Europe. Being home to eight UNESCO heritage sites, Slovakia boasts the largest number of castles per capita in the world, situated within its picturesque and mountainous landscapes. Interesting fact to note, Mr. Speaker, did you know that many of Ontario's Jaguar, Land Rover, and Kia vehicles are imported from this largest per capita car producer who manufactures over 1 million passenger vehicles per year? Speaker, I am proud to be among the 72,000 strong Slovakian diaspora in Canada, in good company with politician Tim Hudak, sport journalist George Gross, or hockey player Natalie Bobinova. Dear colleagues, please join me in wishing our Slovakian Canadian friends a Shchastny Deň Ustavy Slovenskej Republiky. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Thunder Bay Superior North. Thank you, Speaker. I would like today to talk about Suomi Koti, a nonprofit seniors residence that has been providing our elders in Thunder Bay Superior North with exemplary independent living residences for over 30 years. Suomi Koti is one of the few organizations in Thunder Bay that offers independent living for seniors at not-for-profit rates. It is affordable 
beautifully maintained, close to amenities, surrounded by trees, and I would be very happy to live there myself. Suomi Koti has plans to build an additional 60 apartments, 20 of which will be reserved for low-income seniors. But to do this, they must rely on donations and government funding to create this new and much-needed housing. There is currently a five- to seven-year wait list to get into this and the two other non-profit homes in the city, so the need is clear. The board of Suomi Koti has worked with the most respected designers and planners to put together their funding and building plans. Unfortunately, federal and provincial funding levels are no longer what they were when Suomi Koti was first established, and they are struggling to access funding, even though this type of housing is clearly needed. Speaker, I look forward to meeting with representatives from the provincial government to advocate for financial support for Suomi Koti so that they can continue to do what they already do so well, provide first-rate affordable housing that seniors in Thunder Bay Superior North need and deserve. Thank you. Here, here. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker. The opening of the CNE is another indication that our lives are back to normal. I was delighted and honored to attend the opening of the National Ethnic Press and Media Council of Canada booth at the CNE and meet so many old friends. The NEPMCC is a form of more than 800 member publications, print, online, radio, and TV, that represent 65 different languages. They reach over 7 million Canadians. I would like to congratulate Mr. Thomas Saras for leading the organization to new heights and achievements. For more than seven decades, the ethnic newspapers have been meeting the challenges of assistance, guidance, and integration of millions of newcomers who have immigrated to Canada. All this is, this is done in a spirit of helping them to become better Canadians. Its role has been to introduce immigrants to their new environment as efficiently and painlessly possible for them, their families, and their community in order, to, in order for them to become full-fledged citizens of our country so that the newcomers are willing and able to contribute their talents and abilities for the benefit of all Canadians. They also promote excellence in journalism among their members. They serve as a forum for the study and discussion of barriers faced by ethnic groups, and they gather and disseminate information which leads to a better understanding and cooperation among the various ethnic groups in Canada and the mainstream society. They are an integral part of our society, and they deserve our unwavering support and solidarity. I wish the National Ethnic Press and Media Council of Canada and Mr. Saras many more successes and milestones. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Don Valley East. Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> First, I would like to acknowledge the clerks who have been so supportive of me as a rookie MPP. They literally reminded me that it's my turn to speak now. <clears throat> Anyways, on this last day of the legislative week, we have the special opportunity to look ahead with anticipation to a long weekend, because this Monday is Labor Day. For some people, this may be an opportunity for a rest, but for the residents in Don Valley East, it is anything but because it will be a beehive of community activity. For example, the residents of Flemington's Sunny Glenway community will be hosting an enormous outdoor community fair that will include a barbecue, live music, a magic show, and a variety of activities for children. The Canadian Community Services Organization, supported by the North Toronto Cluster of Churches and East York Town Centre, will hold a back-to-school event in which they deliver somewhere between 500 and 600 backpacks for free, along with kits of personal protective equipment. Families across the riding will enjoy the warm company of friends and family. But we mustn't lose sight of the bigger picture. I invite all of us to remember and celebrate what Labor Day is all about. It is about honouring workers and about all those people who fought for us to secure better rights, higher wages and safer working conditions. We've come a long way, but there's still far to go. In the midst of a pandemic, the people of Ontario still need 10 paid sick days. They mustn't have their wages capped to 1% by Bill 124 
and they need to believe that their workplace is safe. To everyone in this legislature, in Don Valley East and across our great province, I wish you a safe, happy, restful and inspiring Labor Day weekend. Member for Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise once again to share some great news from the amazing riding of Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Speaker, I want to highlight a wonderful event. A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to join with four different branches of the International Lions Club to welcome a group of European Lions members as they ran over 1,000 kilometers across two countries from Chicago to Montreal in support of advocacy, awareness, and fundraising for the people of Ukraine. Their motto, modified from the International Lions Club, we run, we serve, and in 2022, we serve the Ukraine. Speaker, I want to express my gratitude to the Bath and District Lions Club, the Madoc Lions Club, the Amherst View Lions Club, and the Odessa Lions Club for their invitation to join this event and for, th for their support of this amazing effort. And of course, I want to thank the runners themselves for their dedication to service. The Lions Club across this country and around the world provide a fantastic opportunity for local people to come out and serve their communities. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Kitchener Conestoga. Thank you very much, Speaker, and it is my pleasure to rise today to announce the triumphant return of fall fairs to the great riding of Kitchener Conestoga. I want to give a heartfelt welcome back to the Wellesley Township Fall Fair. One night only, Tuesday, September 13th, and folks, it's free admission. Wow. Their theme this year is reconnecting communities. They will be celebrating by raffling off the newly finished Community Quilt Project of 2021. Next, the New Hamburg Fall Fair runs September 15th through 18th. The theme this year is Back to Our Roots, a celebration of our agricultural community. New attractions include the Ultimut Stunk Dogs and Reptile Kingdom. We can't forget, of course, the Wellesley Apple Butter and Cheese Festival, which returns on September 24th, and it is a team effort, Mr. Speaker. The Lions Club sells sausage on a bun, the Optimus sells uh, schnitzel on a bun, the Lutheran churches sell apple dumplings, and Mennonite churches sell apple fritters, which I know you're a big fan of, Speaker. <laughs> Last but not least, Oktoberfest. Yeah. It's Wonder Bar. And it's back, running from September 23rd to October 15th, and the official keg tapping will be Friday, October 7th. Come raise a stein and polka around the largest Oktoberfest outside of Germany. All of these fall fairs cannot run without the help of countless volunteers, so thank you to all the volunteers for all their hard work and helping to celebrate our region's proud history. Thank you, Speaker. concludes our members' statements for this morning. Um, I feel an obligation to remind the members that the members' statements are 90 seconds in length, not two minutes, and, uh, and remind them as much as possible if we could adhere to the time that the standing orders provide. I, I'm reluctant to interrupt members who are including a, a good statement, but uh, we, we have to keep in mind the standing orders. Point of order, member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. Mr. Speaker. If you seek it, I believe you'll find unanimous consent to allow members to wear gold ribbon lapel pins in recognition of September as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Thank you. Elgin, member for Elgin, Middlesex, London is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to allow members to wear gold ribbon lapel pins in recognition of September being Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Agreed.